Welcome to the Model Vegas Show, where we talk with locals in the community to highlight one of my favorite things about Vegas, its people. Hi, and welcome to the Model Vegas Show. We are in Armenia. I don't know if you noticed, but the studio looks a little bit different. <laughs> Mom, we're actually on the show. <laughs> oh, you guys have no idea what we have been through to bring this show to you. Okay, we haven't slept. We haven't had dinner today. We've been through three laptops and we were determined. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, for those who do not know what the Model Vegas show is about, it is a place where you'll discover that Vegas is more than the Strip. It's a place where you'll meet some cool people. And <laughs> hopefully we'll learn a thing or two. Um, today's guest is very, very special. She's a Las Vegas local and she's my mom. <laughs> Hi, Mara. I made a promise to my viewers that I would give them the coolest and the best guest, so I'm keeping that promise. So, my mom is pretty cool, and I moved to Vegas for her seven years ago to be closer to her because she wanted to be in warmer weather. We were on the East Coast, and I'm glad that I did. And uh, we are right now, like I said, in Armenia, and um, we just left Lebanon. We were there for 11 days and today's show is basically about our experience there. And we're going to go over how my family ended up in Lebanon, why my family left Lebanon in the 1970s. Yes. And, um, the experience that we had when we were there, um, my mother's experience particularly, cause she hadn't been there in what, 45 years, 45. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to go over some beautiful things that we saw in Lebanon with you today as well. But I'm going to start with a very interesting fact for you, okay? Did you know that 3 million Armenians live in Armenia, but 8 million Armenians live around the world? And why is that? Why, right? That's because of the Armenian genocide. And um, it's important to understand the history of the Armenians, to understand why my family ended up in Lebanon, right? So um, World War I, the genocide occurred during and after, and the Turkish government, also known as the Ottoman Empire at the time, exterminated 1.5 million Armenians. And the ones that were lucky enough to um, survive went to countries like Lebanon who welcomed them in. And um, my family lived in a little town called Burchamud. <laughs> Am I saying that right? You said it's very good. Burchamud. Yeah. And um, my first my first question for my mother as my guest is, Mom, what was it like living in Burchamud when you were little? Uh, I was a happy child living in Burchamud. Yeah. Uh, Burchamud is uh, completely, uh, was at the time, uh, we were all Armenians. Mm. Uh, Lebanese people were very hospitable to accept yeah. us there. Uh, they gave us grounds uh, to live at. Uh, we first lived in uh, tents. Well, when you say uh, we, you're talking about your mom and dad. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. yeah, my grandparents, yeah. I, oh, I'm grandparents, saying, yeah. who survived the genocide. Yeah. The killings. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, the Armenians uh, had uh, refugee camps to live in. Then uh, they uh, had uh, tins houses, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, quickly uh, they uh, built uh, stone uh, buildings. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, they were very uh, uh, clever people, uh, hardworking people. So, they did you made have fun? A city. The Burchamut. The so. Burchamut city. Did you have fun living in Burchamut? Oh, yeah. What was it like when we you were, were a kid? Uh, did you have a lot of friends? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, everybody there were Armenians. Mm -hmm. Like, it was a big community yeah. uh, of Armenians living. Our school was all Armenian, private mm -hmm. school. So, uh, I was very, very happy living yeah. there. And you left when you were 20? 20. 20 years old. Yeah. Are there any other communities in... Armenia that I were welcoming other than Bujamud. You mean in Lebanon? I mean, <laughs> I 
in yeah, Lebanon. I know how you would make that mistake. Now, <laughs> well, it's it's mistake. like little Armenia, that's why. Yeah. But were there other towns like that? Uh, like well, in Lebanon, there's another town mm. uh, called Anjar. Okay. Mm. We that, went there. Yes. Yeah. That's completely Armenian mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Armenians live there. So we also visited an Armenian orphanage, and um, it was converted into a museum. And it was to honor the victims of the Armenian genocide. Um, there were several refugee camps to, uh, for Armenian survivors. And the Near East, the Near East Relief Foundation helped by evacuating 110 Armenian orphans um, from the Ottoman Empire. And some of those orphans went to Russia. They went to Eastern Armenia, Lebanon, Syria, and Greece. 1,400 of those orphans, like you see in the little statues right there, um, were sent to that particular orphanage, which is in Biblos in Lebanon. And um, it, this is really interesting. My aunt, well, my mother's aunt, which would be your father's sister. Yeah. And her husband were uh, the, the, out, out of those 1,400. Mm -hmm. They were there and uh, they met there. And they uh, fell in love, mm -hmm. and they want, and they married, and, and they have four uh, kids. Yes, they ended up having four kids. Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of crazy going to that orphanage because I got to see where Hokur was raised. Yes, it's insane. Yeah. Um, Hokur has gone and has passed away since, but I've heard the stories, and I just had never really actually seen it from my own. Uh, for myself, we signed the book at the very end that you just saw, and um, we wrote a little uh, paragraph in there. That right there that you're seeing is um, Maria Jacobson. She was a, a Danish woman who was the director of the orphanage for 34 years, and she actually dedicated her entire, well, not her entire life, but 34 years of her life um, there at that orphanage yes. uh, for those orphans. And she was buried there. That was yeah. the little... Um, stone with her burial. Did you mention the orphanage's name is called uh, Turchnot's Point? Yes. Which literally translates to uh, bird's, nest. bird's Nest. Bird's it's Nest. Very interesting. Yep. And uh, we also visited another Armenian uh, memorial mm -hmm. in the city of, I'm trying to not mess this one up, Bikfaya. Yeah. Okay. And that the memorial there was actually dedicated to the anniversary of the Armenian genocide, the 50th, the 50th anniversary of the Armenian genocide. My mom actually remembers visiting that memorial in 1965 at the dedication uh, when she was 11 years old with her yes. father. And we went back to that memorial and yes. she took a picture in front of it. Yeah. So what was it like for you going back there? Uh, lots of memories came back. Uh, when I visited in 1965, uh, undergrounds mm -hmm. there, uh, there was only that uh, monument. It's a bronze bronze yeah. monument. Uh, but when I went back 45 years later, there were lots of uh, very pretty buildings built also around uh, a big hall. So I was amazed at how much uh, uh, it changed. changed. Yes. Uh, well, so very interesting nice that, isn't it funny how that actually changed, but some of what we saw was exactly the same in a weird way. We'll go yeah, over that in a yeah. little bit. So um, one of the other, the other things that we're going to cover is, you know, we said, obviously my family left Lebanon, right? And went to the U.S. And part of that reason is because my grandmother was, very, very fascinated about the stories that she had heard about the United States. And she wanted her family to have economic prosperity and a chance to have a better life. So my family actually left Lebanon in 1974, six months before the Civil War started. And um, just a little history about that. The Lebanese Civil War lasted uh, I mean, yeah, it lasted until 1990. 15 years. Yeah, and uh, it resulted in roughly 120,000 uh, fatalities, and over 76,000 people were displaced in Lebanon. Now, 
when we were driving around in the mountains, I am a very curious person. So <laughs> I saw a lot of houses and buildings that were severely damaged and empty. Abandoned. And they were abandoned buildings. And I had to go in them, guys. I went into a couple of them. And uh, this particular one, my mom was being a chicken and she wouldn't come in there with me. So Tantik Vatuhi went with me into this abandoned building. And I mean, I just, I was fascinated about the fact that these um, homeowners were not there anymore. I mean, they were forced to leave. And um, the story is their homeowners are probably still around somewhere and they're probably coming back to, um, you know, fix up these homes and, and probably maybe live back, but nobody knows, nobody really knows. So, but I, I thought it was interesting going inside and kind of seeing what happened and the interior was so demolished, but it's fascinating to me that the exterior was still there exactly the way that it's supposed to be because all their houses are made out of what cement brick. It's not yes. like here. All houses are built of uh, stone uh, cement. Yeah. And um, the, the view that you're about to see is right out that window. And it was, Beautiful. Yeah, gorgeous. My mom was in the car waiting in the front. <laughs> Why wouldn't you come? You were being a chicken. Yeah, I didn't want to <laughs> see it. Um, so, yeah, and uh, I saw the houses because I was curious. So what was it like growing up in the U.S. after leaving? And I know most of the family did go to the U.S. I know that mm -hmm. uh, pretty much everybody was in the U.S. by what, 1977? Yes, uh, yeah. my two brothers couldn't come because they were married at the time, mm -hmm. so they didn't belong to the uh, f uh, initial, you know, immediate family. Oh, yeah. But uh, they followed us in 1977, mm -hmm. so we were complete, you know. Did you have? Seventy-seven. Did you have friends there that were still there? Were you worried about uh, yes, them during of the war? Yes, I had cousins. I had friends. You know. Yeah. Yeah. They were uh, uncles, aunts that were left behind, uh, who were in war. So we were pretty much worried about yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. So Nene had some kind of a. Well, we called my grandmother Nene. It just seems like she had some kind of premonition or something. I mean, we were, they moved six months prior to it which is I find interesting. Um, so my mom went back to Lebanon after 45 years of yes. not being there. And um, what was it like seeing Buchamut again after 45 years? Be honest. Uh, it was pretty <laughs> emotional. Yeah. I'm going to say. Yeah. Especially when I saw uh, the house. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I couldn't recognize the building, the yeah. street. It was very, very much changed. Yeah, we can, we're actually uh, driving around here yeah. looking for it because we can't, we, we don't know where it you is. Know, I went by the street three, four times uh, and I couldn't recognize. Look at you asking somebody for directions. Yeah, finally, <laughs> I uh, asked uh, an Armenian man, you can see in the mm -hmm. video, and uh, he and I asked for grandma's workplace, mm -hmm. which is Karagözian Foundation. Uh, I didn't know how to ask for the house where I live. Yeah. So, and this is the house right now yeah, that you're walking into. I'm this is the house. Up. We did finally find the house. And what I think was shocking the most was the wires that were hanging yeah. everywhere. And I'm saying uh, my house was not this way. Yeah. This building was very, very nice. It was uh, painted. The windows mm -hmm. were there. Uh, this is grandma's room. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I wanted to go the see the house inside. Mm -hmm. So I went in and uh, we knocked. On, you knocked on the. Well, you rang the doorbell. Refugees were living there, so they opened the house. The little girl and uh, the parents took us in. You know, they were very nice. So I, I'm saying like, uh, we had a table here. I ha we had this here, that here. And I'm explaining to you how we had furnished the house. And this was our, uh, that was our uh, dining room. And this used to be our uh, uh, 
living room. Mm-hmm. My friend told me who used to live next door to take a picture in front of that window. Yeah. So I'm setting up so that I can have a picture taken in front of that window. She was so cute. The kids yeah. there were so cute. Yeah, the kids were very, very nice, cute. They were trying to speak English to you. <laughs> That's the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, lots of memories. Then I entered this be- bedroom, mom's bedroom, mm-hmm. and I went to the balcony uh, where I used to study. A table and chair used to be in that corner I used to study. I used to look at the neighbor's house from here. <laughs> so lots of memories came back. Yeah. It was pretty emotional. Uh, I am I am glad, even though, you know, the place Burjamu needs, like it needs, I mean, I wish somebody was taking care of it. it, it like the house was run down. But I am grateful that it was still there. And you were actually able to yes, ring yes, the doorbell course, and go inside. Course. Yeah. I mean, if that was anywhere else, it probably wouldn't have been there. They would have yeah. uh, built over that. Or, the war had done a number on it, but yeah. uh, uh, the building still existed, but in a very, very bad shape. Yeah. Um, we also visited my grandmother's um, uh, clinic. And it's literally across the street. I mean, yeah. you, you can walk there in like right. three footsteps. Yeah. And um, it was very emotional for my mom yeah. because um, that's where her mother worked for 30 years. Yeah. And this I is, got very she, emotional. She was, here too. mom, sorry, yeah. I, had to, I had to show everybody how emotional you I was very, it's very not emotional funny. here. I, I was happy that you got to, to actually see that and connect with um, yeah. Nene again, really. Because uh, my mother has passed away, and she has worked in this clinic for 30 years, and uh, that made me very emotional, entering that uh, clinic and remembering her. Uh, she had she has worked there uh, since 15 years old until 45 years old. And the only reason she left the clinic was... Uh, to go to United States. She would not have left uh, if she hadn't gone to the United mm-hmm. States. That's the only reason she left. And while she left, I have the medal. Yeah. When she left, they had given her uh, this uh, medal, which is uh, uh, the, it. it has the You want to show the S. The S is uh, the symbol of uh, Lebanese uh, mm-hmm. symbol uh, that's uh, the tree of uh, and, uh, yeah it ha- it's also on the flag of Lebanon and in the back it says uh, for working in the Karagozian Foundation mm-hmm. from 1945 to 1974 and uh, in Lebanon uh, I brought it back so I'm going to purchase a because her chain was very, very old. She had used it Mm -hmm. for 30 years. It broke. So I purchased a new chain in Lebanon. When I go back from Armenia, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to wear it every day like her. We brought it with us to the clinic so we could kind of bring it back home Home, to where it it all started. And it was very, very important to me that we did that. Um, this has a lot of energy in it, people. This little thing, this little gold medallion with the tree on it, it had a lot. Of, it still does have a lot of energy. Um, so we did that. It was it was a, it was on the bucket list, and we checked it off. So I'm very happy we did that. Now we've talked to you about all these things like wars and genocides and all these sad things, um, but happy too. Um, but one of the things about Lebanon is it's, it's still beautiful. Even after the war, I mean, there's so many beautiful things about it. One of them is the, the beaches. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. Um, because the Mediterranean coast, it extends from the north and the south of the country. So my favorite beach was Ocean Blue. And the water was so warm. And the sunset was absolutely breathtaking right here we are mom where are we how do you we, <laughs> yeah and we were on this i don't want to say it teleferic teleferic <laughs> you did very well we were on the teleferic and i was so scared you guys i don't like heights 
I don't uh, like anything that's really high above, but I don't even like flying, but I did it. And I went all the way to the top. Um, how do you say is one of Lebanon's oldest and most visited tourist attractions. Um, the home of Lebanese pilgrimage site called Our Lady of Lebanon. And it's accessible from the coastal city of Juni. And uh, we took the Telefidique, which took us about 10 minutes to get up to the top of Herisa. Herisa, right? Herisa. Yeah. Herisa. Herisa. Uh, so you see the Lady of Lebanon. I walked all the way up to the top of that monument. And yeah, so here I am walking all the way to the top and going back down, which is what I wanted at one point. <laughs> But I, I, it was beautiful. Look at, look yeah, at the very views. Beautiful, yeah. I mean, it was gorgeous. Every we, tourist who goes there uh, has to visit Harissa. Yeah, I think it's so. It's a nice place to go. It was very uh, spiritual up there. It was, there was a lot of positive energy, and I went inside and I said a few prayers. That we'll see. <laughs> oh, here we go. People yeah. going back up. And uh, another thing that we're going to do, because we're actually going back to Lebanon for a few days, that I have to mention, uh, Jaita Grotto. Jaita. Jaita. You said it right. Jaita. Um, Jaita is actually located in Mom Say It. Nahar Kelp. Literally translates to uh, Dog's uh, River. Dog's River, okay. Yeah, Nahar Kelp. It was discovered in 1836 by an American missionary, actually, named William Thompson. And the cave is a main uh, tourist attraction. It brings 280,000 visitors per year to um, that area. It was nominated as one of new seven wonders of the world. So um, it's one of the longest caves in the Middle East. And... Last but not least, we cannot have a show without talking about food, okay? We just can't. And one of my favorite foods is knefen. I'm going to mess this up, too. I always mess it up. <laughs> Knefeb jibin. Knefeb jibin, okay? I just know how to eat it, not say it. Um, <laughs> this is a very traditional Lebanese dessert. Dessert. I had a lot of different versions of it when I was in Lebanon. This version was one of my favorites, and um, it's made out of sweet cheese, and usually it's put in a bun like that you see in, in the video. It's called kak. <laughs> kak. You can say it, I'm sure. Well, say that again. Kak. <laughs> okay. You crack me up. Um, I'm not going to try it's very common, by the way, to have this in the morning with your coffee. It's very, very sweet. And they give you sugar on the side, like a watery sugar. But they didn't need to add it. I never add it. I just, I don't, I know. I don't need it. Some people do. Yeah. Um, I just, I can't even believe that we had this episode. We but did it, Mara. We ate lots of other good food. Like okay, tabule, you can mention it. Go tabule, ahead. hummus, baba ganoush, or mutabel. Sometimes they call it. You had fish. Uh, fish, yeah, yeah. Fish is good there. Mm. Uh, lots of, lots of many other foods we had. Mm. Uh, what else did we have? We just kept yeah, eating. We, the yeah. uh, they have kibbe. Yeah, so lots of good food they have. Yeah, we enjoyed enjoyed our trip. We did so much, and we we're going gave, back for nightlife. Oh yeah, we didn't they have very good nightlife. So my we're, mom, we're going back for more. She's a clubber. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going back, and uh, we're going to experience a little bit of the, the nightlife there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. They say that it might be better than Vegas, guys. I'm not sure about that. We will find out. Yep. Uh, I will be posting a lot more stuff. I mean, I did more than what I'm actually telling you. We did more. And uh, I will definitely be posting and it then on Definitely social media. I'm going back to Burchamut one more time. Yeah. Uh, because it was nighttime soon. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go. And Burchamut is uh, very well known now for its jewelry stores. Mm -hmm. They have good food and uh it's uh, not just those houses that you yeah. saw, you know. It has very good uh, shopping area. 
a nice entertainment places. Yeah. So we're going to go have go good time at Burj Hamoud again. Yes. And we're, like I said, are in Armenia right now. And we've been working day and night for you to put this together. I haven't seen Armenia yet, except the hotel, Ibis Hotel, which entertained us. Uh, they have uh, done a lot for us to get to get this show to you. Yes. Uh, Maral show, of course. We, I'm taking over, it seems. It's so. your show too, Mom. Okay. <laughs> well, and... Uh, they have been very, very accommodating mm -hmm. to put the show together. We had the hardest time with Wi-Fi going away, you know, no Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi coming back, etc. Laptop going from one to another. Yeah. Uh, so you're just giving the very, uh, very uh, hard time, but you, we did it. We did it. I mean, Maral did it. <laughs> I'm just a guest. <laughs> Mom, you're, you're part of my show. Okay. Okay. So... Um, I also want to thank Simon from, he's yes. the IT manager at IBIT. I, am I saying Ibis. that? I always mispronounce Ibis. words. Ibis Hotel. Uh, that wraps up the show, guys. I can't believe it. Uh, thank you, Mom, for being my guest. Yep. Now we're going to uh, start to see, uh, to go on uh, excursions here in Armenia yeah. to bring you another show, which Maral will bring you another show. About uh, Armenia. About Armenia. Yes. And uh, thank you to the viewers and the listeners, uh, my followers. Uh, that If you want to know more about what we're doing, then you have to follow me on my social media. At Maral Vegas. M-A-R-A-L-V-E-G-A-S. Not Maral Vegas. <laughs> I will be posting more stuff. Yes. And um, let's see. What else? Uh, stay tuned for my next episode. And if you have any questions or concerns... You may email me at maral at vegasvideonetwork.com. I also want to give a very special thank you to two Tantiks when we were in Lebanon. Naidi Tantik and Vartui Tantik for driving us around everywhere and taking us to all these places and being very patient with us. Um, guys, be sure to tell all your friends that the Model Vegas show can be found in any of the following areas. iTunes, Roku, YouTube, Stitcher, iTunes, I said that, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Google Play, Twitter, Facebook, any RSS feed reader, and of course, the Vegas Video Network. And, oh, the website, VegasVideoNetwork.com. See you soon. Bye. Ha <laughs>